If this doesn't start, I genuinely don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, you, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Wait. Welcome to Dirt, Sweat, and Gears, where the solution to every problem is to throw money at it. Just kidding, that's not the solution. And if you watched last week's video, you'll be able to tell why. If you remember from last week, my wife had some problems with this car. Uh, it broke down on her on the freeway, and we had to tow it home. Uh, now, when I dug into the car, I discovered quite a few problems, uh, in addition to the problem of the car not starting. It would start and then pretty much within a few seconds shut down. Uh, the car threw a code one, which uh, is for ignition pulse, which is most commonly attributed to the uh, air flow meter. However, the air flow meter is brand new and I've confirmed it works. In fact, when the car shuts down after starting, the fuel pump continues to run for a few seconds, which tells me that the fuel pump is actually running during the uh, uh, ignition position two. Now, we threw a bunch of new parts at this thing and it still wasn't working. Uh, we threw a new cam angle sensor, uh, a new ignition switch, a new main fuse, uh, and really just uh, spending a whole bunch of money kind of needlessly. We also fixed a few problems that were actual problems that did uh, require solving. All of these little problems, I decided I'm going to fix everything uh, that needs to be fixed along the way because why not? Well, typically you want to fix one problem at a time, but I had this problem kind of localized to one specific system. So uh, fixing an oil leak really was, uh, for me, something I was comfortable doing without, uh, you know, conflating issues. Now, I have to admit, I am cheating a little bit. I'm recording this a little bit out of sequence. I've actually pretty much diagnosed the problem. I haven't actually fixed it or tested it yet, but I have certainly diagnosed it and I'm gonna take you on that journey with me. So without further ado, let's go back in time to some point in time that I won't know until I edit this and uh, pick up where we left off last week. Let's talk about what I've done so far to diagnose this pile of junk. Uh, I have tested that the fuel pump works. Uh, I have jumped the uh, fuel pump circuit uh, on this little diagnosis thing and the fuel pump does spin up. It spins up and it'll still start up and die. Uh, I also checked the airflow meter. Uh, I held the flap open and the fuel pump cycles. Again, starts up and dies. I have tested compression in all the cylinders. Uh, number two was a little bit low, but uh, it was still like, I think 135, 130, uh, which is lower than the other ones, but it's uh, still not low enough to cause any problems. All the other ones were at uh, 155 or one, even 160. Uh, so it's not compression related. Um, what else have I checked? Uh, I did notice that this ground wire was disconnected. Uh, I don't know if the bolt fell out or if I tried to do something and forgot to reconnect it. So I reconnected that, still didn't solve the problem. I cleaned the grounds both there and there, uh, still didn't solve the problem. Uh, I have a brand new igniter with a lifetime warranty from O'Reilly over there. I have a brand new cam angle sensor over there. And of course I have tested to make sure that this works and it does. So uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm thinking there's, it's, it's either wiring uh, or it's the computer itself. That's kind of kind of where I'm going. Well, I have to admit, I am kind of running out of ideas and I'm running out of patience. Uh, however, I did discover uh, we have a little bit of an oil leak inside the upper timing cover. Uh, this could be valve cover gasket. This could be a camshaft seal. Uh, very unlikely that there's oil coming out from 
uh, you know, the motor itself. Uh, so we're going to take this timing cover off. And while we're in there, uh, I am going to uh, see if the timing belt skip a tooth because that would also cause the problem I'm having. Uh, if it's, I, I, I highly doubt the oil problem is related to the timing belt, but uh, we're going to solve this oil problem. And uh, like I said, while we're in there, we're going to check to see uh, uh, the timing belt itself. Well, first thing I noticed here is that the timing belt um, looks, well, let's just say it does not look like a timing belt with a thousand miles or less on it. It looks pretty bad. Uh, so clearly there is oil getting in and uh, you can see that on the back plate here. And I believe it's coming from the camshaft seal on the intake side. Uh, you see it is, there's a lot of uh, oil around here. Uh, so I might have to take uh, the timing belt and camshaft off to fix it. Uh, so this does have to be fixed. Um, so that's, I guess, I guess that's just something I know now. Uh, I might just go ahead and replace both camshaft seals, even though they are brand new. Uh, it, they, neither of them look like they're actually doing a good job. So, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I torqued everything down correctly. So I don't think that's the issue. But uh, I did pop them off when uh, they, when the uh, bolts back themselves out because I didn't tighten the cam bolts correctly. So it is possible that they just didn't reseal after that. Or it's not pushed in far enough or any number of things that are going on. So uh, it looks like I am going to have to remove this timing belt one way or another uh, just to solve this oil issue. But I really want to make sure before I do any work, I really want to make sure uh, to double check if, if we're even on time. So I am going to have to drop the sway bar in order to get in there and manually turn the crank. I'll probably pop out the spark plugs uh, just so that it's a little bit easier to turn. Looking more closely at the belt itself, uh, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, it doesn't seem to be saturated in oil. Uh, there is quite a bit of oil on the outside of it that definitely doesn't look good. Uh, I'm going to try to clean that off as best I can, but I'm uh, going to try to reuse the belt. Another reason for that is I can't fit an impact gun in there without taking out the radiator, and I just really don't want to do that. So uh, I also don't want to drain the coolant. Uh, I really want to do as little work as uh, possible in order to get this job done uh, because uh, I, I've done this enough times on this car that I shouldn't have to be doing this again. Uh, so I want to just keep using this belt and I think that's going to be just fine as long as I replace these cam seals. i got to find out what the hell is going on there. Um, which means uh, lining up the timing belt is actually going to be pretty easy. I just have to uh, line up the uh, white mark to the mark on the timing belt cover, which it looks like it's very close. Uh, and I'm not going to take the timing belt off until I receive uh, the uh, tool for uh, locking the cam gears in place because I want to make sure that I am uh, in fact off time. I'm fairly certain I am just based on my eyes, but um, my eyes are what got me here. So I want to use the tool. Finally, I have something tangible to go off of. I got a little bit desperate and started posting on uh, Miata.net for advice. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's had this problem. So I have a brand new cam angle sensor, a new igniter, a uh, new main relay, and I've pretty much gone over everything else. I discovered that oil leak, uh, so I cleaned up the belt. I can actually keep using this belt so I don't have to take the whole front end of this car apart. Uh, when I get the uh, cam gear tool from Fly and Miata, I'm gonna double check that the uh, timing is on. Uh, once I get the cam tool in, I can uh, tie it to these cam gears 
and take it off and replace these uh, seals here. I can also replace the valve cover gasket. So, back to my problem. I posted on Miata.net and someone kept insisting that it was the igniter. I said, no, it's not the igniter, but uh, there's a bunch of things in between the igniter, the cam angle sensor, and the coil pack. So I decided I would start checking for continuity. Thankfully, my brand new igniter has these handy little labels on them telling you where everything goes. There's also corresponding wire colors, but uh, I put a little bit less trust in the wire colors because it could change from here to here. Uh, so uh, this was really handy for me to test continuity. So first I checked continuity between the igniter and the cam angle sensor. Everything looked good. That said, these wires are a little bit frayed. I put uh, these insulators over them just to, to kind of help things along, but it's pretty frayed here. So uh, I ordered a new pigtail harness for the uh, cam angle sensor, and I might replace that anyway. Uh, however, the connections look good. So I started doing continuity checks between the igniter and uh, the coil pack, which is this connector here, and something just didn't seem right. I was uh, getting like very variations depending on how I was holding it. Um, I, I can't really describe what was going on, just something didn't seem right. So I started to take apart the harness here and take a look at what I found. That looks a little melty if you ask me. So at some point something here shorted and grounded and really I think all I need to do is uh, yeah, look at that. I need to recrimp this uh, and better insulate it. So I'm probably going to peel this back a little bit more, uh, recrimp this connection, and then um, I'll better insulate this so that it doesn't connect with this blue wire, which uh, seems to be a ground. Uh, so my assumption here is that this material is actually what was uh, preventing the uh, life spark from shorting out. So I need to better insulate this. How am I going to do that? I'm not entirely sure yet, but I, I am fairly certain the tools exist to do that. So uh, that, that right there was my problem. Uh, while I was diagnosing that, I of course broke this vacuum connection to this charcoal canister because that's a thing that happens to me. Uh, so I have two things to fix, three things to fix, including this oil leak, and I can put this car back together. But I am very, very confident now that I have found the problem. As you can see here, I have the Flying Miata cam gear tool. Uh, they call it the Cam Ninja, I think. Uh, and this helped me confirm that the timing was, in fact, on. So I did not have to make any adjustments. Uh, I just slipped this guy in here and... You can see the uh, timing marks here. My timing was just fine, so I went ahead and zip tied that together uh, to lock in the cams themselves. I use the wrench trick that's in every other tutorial. Uh, pop the timing belt off, pop the gears off, and let's take a look at these cam seals. So these are new cam seals, but you can see they're both kind of leaking. And I think I know why. So back when I was still doing some trial and error, and when I first got this car running, it turned out that I had forgotten to torque down the cam gear bolts. And that resulted in the cams falling apart and breaking apart and uh, the car falling out of time. So I had to get new cam gears because they were both damaged. Uh, the key, key Woodruff keys here uh, had just completely sheared and they had torn uh, uh, some damage into the cam itself and rather than try to fix that I don't really have the skill to do that I just got new ones they were cheap enough and because I was a cheap ass I reused these because I figured hey they only have no miles on them well I think that was a mistake because they're leaking now so we're gonna go ahead and replace these I'm going to pop these retainers off, pull them uh, out, and then put the new ones in. And then I can put this all back together 
And it should go back together pretty easily because I have the cam, uh, the cams themselves locked in. I've got the cam gears locked in and I've got the adjuster ready to pop out. So this should go pretty well. The belt itself is just fine. It had a little bit of oil on it, but I was able to clean it up. So let's get this back together so that I can move on to the electrical problem. It's all back together and I have the new harnesses spliced on, but I have some complaints. So you see here how this original uh, harness connector uh, it has a yellow wire, a white wire, a white red wire, and a black wire. First of all, the colors on the eBay specials I bought are completely different. But even worse than that, the gauges of the wires are different. So I'm a little bit concerned about the uh, splicing thicker gauges into thinner gauge wires. But uh, I'm going to leave that up to chance. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go with this, see if this works. I will definitely be leaving them bad reviews because uh, that is especially the... So the color is bad enough because next time I go to look at a wiring diagram, the colors are all going to be wrong. And I'm not going to know what to do. Uh, but worse than that is the uh, gauges of wires being different uh, on the coil packs themselves. I noticed that on the coil pack side, they were all the same gauge. They were all smaller. So I was less concerned about that than uh, I would have been had they been the same. Uh, but on the uh, cam angle sensor, that's just completely unacceptable for the wires to be the wrong gauge. So we're going to give this a shot. The cars, I mean, under the hood is basically all together. I've still got some sorting out to do in here. I've got to put the uh, computer back where it belongs and uh, tie the battery down. But underneath the hood, everything should be good to go. I've got everything reconnected, uh, all of the wires spliced back together, and uh, all of the harnesses connected, timing belts all back together and the drive belts are all back together. So, um, yeah, let's give this a shot. Uh, I have plugged the battery back in. I still have my, uh, let's see, this is, yeah, this is the diagnostic tool. If this doesn't start, I genuinely don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, you, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Wait, it's a different code. Okay. Oh, let's not get discouraged just yet. That was uh, idle control, and that was just a plug that I missed putting back in. So uh, now that I've plugged in the idle control valve, now it's time to get discouraged. Let's give this a try. Code one. Alrighty. Yep. So here's something interesting. The tack doesn't work. The tack worked before. I have to go back to my video just to double check, but I am 99% certain the tack worked before. So we have the same error code, but a different problem. I have the car on the ground. So let's rewind and go back to where I was before. So um, so we tried to start the car up and it started up and shut down and died again. However, there was a difference. The tack was not working this time. So that tells me that either I introduced a new problem or I fixed the problem I was having and introduced a new problem. So the tack not working uh, turns out to be uh, the igniter or the wiring between the igniter and the ECU. 
uh, if you remember, I had gotten this connector, and I had noted that one of the wires was actually a thicker gauge than what came on this pigtail harness. So I decided that, you know, as a general rule, there's not much of a problem going with a thicker wire if you're only going a little bit thicker, but there can very well be a problem if you're going to a thinner wire from a thicker wire. So I didn't want to cause a short. I didn't want to set the car on fire. So I swapped it back. And uh, because I was getting so close to the firewall on the uh, original harness, I decided to connect, uh, use these connectors. What happens is that you have to add the pins on to uh, the end of the wire and because you're not using any heat shrink tubing, you're not, uh, you know, melting things to the wire. Uh, if I had to remove this, I would actually be removing much, much less wire than if I were uh, to use butt connectors and extend it that way. This also makes it so that I can swap out the extension uh, and connect it to really anything I want. I can repin this much easier than I can repin uh, one of those factory connectors also. I rewired uh, or reconnected uh, the shorting wire and I uh, insulated it and then double insulated it and then wrapped conduit around just the signal wires separate from the ignition wire. So uh, I am pretty confident that I solved the problem. Also, my broken uh, charcoal canister uh, I had to order a new one because the glue job did not hold up. Don't have me arrested and have my car crushed into a cube. I promise uh, I am fixing this. That'll, that'll be done before I actually hit the road. All I have to do now is uh, get this vacuum and then uh, figure out a way to get this to exit out the car. Uh, and until the uh, correct brackets arrive, this really isn't going to go anywhere. I'm not going to do any drifting, so uh, I think I'm going to be okay. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the antenna until I get the correct brackets for the radio, just because th this contraption is just really going to get in my way, and uh, screw that. But aside from those couple of issues, this car is ready to start up. So let's see what happens. Perfect. In fact, it has more throttle response than it did before. So whatever I did um, between the ignition coil wires and the cam angle sensor and all that other crap I did, I made this a better car. The world is safe now. My charcoal canister arrived before I even got to take a, the car out from the garage. So, I'm not an eco-terrorist. You're all safe now. Now I can drive it. Well, I gotta run some errands today, so I thought the best way to give this car a test drive uh, would be to do what I need to do and see if the car gets me where I need to go. Uh, the first thing I did was uh, run over to O'Reilly to drop off return the igniter that uh, I don't need. Not only do I not need it on this car, but it was also broken. And now we're gonna go across town out to another project of mine and um, hopefully make it back in one piece. So right off the bat, uh, the first thing I noticed was that I've got throttle response at idle that I did not have before and I think that can be attributed to the wiring job that I did into the coil pack. Or it could be, well, no, it was the coil pack. Um, the reason is because the uh, connections at the, uh, at the first connector were frayed, were really weak. So I have a feeling that the uh, spark just couldn't make it all the way through. The, either the ignition pulse was weak or the uh, ignition wire itself. And I think it was actually the ignition wire itself 
was no good. Uh, the one that was uh, frayed and falling off. And now, it feels just fine, just like a normal car. I think that made actually the biggest difference. And obviously the fact that it's not shorting out means that the car actually runs. Um, this was, I gotta say, a very, very tough problem to diagnose. Uh, I learned the hard way just how many things can throw a code one. And I went through a lot of stuff. In fact, uh, some of the parts that I put on there that did not fix the problem made it more broken, as we learned from the igniter. So uh, that is, I guess, something I might may have learned is that when you're throwing parts at a car, uh, test them one by one. Igniter most definitely made it worse because when I fixed the short, because I found the short and it was very definite, like, yes, this is the problem. Uh, so I fixed that and I knew it was supposed to run. And in fact, it did start and run better, but it still killed after two seconds telling me a uh, code one. It's like, well, I just fixed code one and you're giving me code one again. So the computer is not smart at all. And the codes that it gives you are not very useful. Um, it's it's more of like a like a barometer, like a starting point of where where you need to go. There there's so many apparently, from what I've learned, there are quite a few other things you need to take into account when you're diagnosing this problem.